Hi, I'm Representative Al Baldassau, and here we are once again on Who's Looking Out for You with my great co host, Janine, Representative Nada from uh, Merrimack. Hi, Al. We've been having some fun, haven't we? We have. Uh, you yeah. out running this morning, I heard? Uh, yes, I'm at uh, 870 miles for the year so far. Wow, how many oh miles this morning? I only did five this morning. Take, but I did 10 plenty hills. Of water? Ten, uh, yeah, I try. You try? I try, yeah. Oh, that's good then. I eat and a lot of candy. Whatever. You're running for re-election, right? I am. And so you got I'm running and running. You have all your candidates over in your district? We, we do. We, do, we have uh, uh, eight on both sides filled. You know, this is the ballot. first time either one of us, right, they're going to have a uh, no primary. Pri no primary. I've never had no primary I love primary that. I don't before. have to spend money now on, uh, out of my pocket to do this thing. But anyway, hey, we got a great guest, I understand, that you we brought do. in today. There, you want to introduce her? I've known her for a long time, but... So have I. She's our yeah. good friend, Shannon McGinley of Cornerstone. Welcome, Shannon. Thank Shannon, you. welcome good to London, Good morning. Good morning. It's so yeah, good to be here. I'm glad you came to, yeah. to t chat with us. You mm -hmm. know, Al and I are both social con conservatives, and Cornerstone, as I look to as the watchdogs of um, the conservative issues, social conservative issues in New Hampshire. Yes, yes. I, I like to be known as that. We've got a vision that... Um, that God is honored and families thrive and religious freedom flourishes and life is cherished. That's our vision. And so we do that at Cornerstone by supporting mm -hmm. representatives and senators like yourselves with information and then also equipping the voters too to know about what's going on in Concord too. Mm -hmm. so you know, one involved. thing about Shannon, you're, you're, of course, our town manager used to be the uh, run that oh, Kevin that's right. Smith. Right. That's right. Kevin he, Smith. He used to be, what do they call it? You're the direct, executive director. Executive director. Mm -hmm. And one, you either loved or you hated it. I mean, isn't that true? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, There's no be, middle ground. Because I know here in my district, people love Cornerstone a lot, of, you know, because we have a very large Christian um, organization here. Mm -hmm. When I led the charge on uh, the gay marriage, um, you know, just a non Biden, just to see mm -hmm. where the people stood yep. at one. They come out of the woodwork to go door to door. Wow. Yeah, that's great. Uh -huh. Yeah, Londonderry is is a good place for, for conservatives mm -hmm. to live, that's now for you, sure. You had some great questions I know you wanted to kick oh, off of. I did. So uh, I know I see you up there in Concord and you're there on your little computer there and uh, you keep track of the bills and we, our side usually loses. <laughs> not all. Well, we, we had some victories this year too. So yeah, well, not all. Can you name some of the victories we had? Yeah. Do you want to talk about the losses or the victories? No, I don't know. Yeah, we'll start with the victories first. Yeah, uh, tell us about some of the bills that you worked on this past legislative session. Well, some of the bills that we worked on, and I, I'll just kind of go through the ones that we lost and then end on the high note mm -hmm. of the ones that oh, we good. won then. Mm -hmm. So um, of the ones, so there were several, many different bills. So we dealt with life bills, um, gender bills. Mm -hmm. uh, we dealt with um, education bills as well. So for example, on the on the gender bills, we had um, a bill that would add gender to the state's list of protection, protected classes, gender identity to the state's list of protected classes. Um, so, you know, usually when people are like um, in a public place and they see like an employment listing of like, you know, we don't discriminate based on sex or race or religion, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, this would add gender identity to that. So it's how, whatever gender that you identify as in any given Whether moment. Whether you are that gender or not. Correct. Um, and so that, of course, would affect uh, all kinds of public accommodations, housing, uh, and employment. So, for example, locker rooms, athletics. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a personal story because we were just talking about, you know, I've been running and I've been running a lot better this year. I came in fifth in my division in my last half marathon. Well, I'm never going to place now because I have to run against men who, who identify as what right. state of like mind. A, that's the key, their that's state, right. of the state of mind. And they, like and in they need no documentation. No. You no. know, I, I was mad over that word and said there's no you shall. It says may. May, yeah, may that's show right. documentation. Well, just uh, just um, in the last two weeks in the state of Connecticut, the state girls high school track meet, yes. the number one and number, number two, two place individuals were both biological males. So imagine those girls that just missed out on making it to the New England Regional Championships right. after all of their years of, of training and yeah. they were beat out by two male individuals. So and then we dealt with a bill that um, was called the therapy ban that added, um, or excuse me, that said that, and this one's a little bit complicated, but it basically said that um, 
a therapist who was helping a minor out ha is forced to affirm the minor in identifying as the opposite gender of their biological sex, or if they um, were dealing with same-sex attraction, they would have to affirm them in their same-sex attraction instead of unpacking that to see if there were was a trauma or something else that may have caused it. Or on the other side of that equation, if there was a minor who was dealing with unwanted same-sex attraction or unwanted gender dysphoria, that they would not be able to seek help from a therapist to help them work through or that. Or clergymen. Yeah. You know oh, I, mean? I know they some clergymen very upset priests, about this. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and well, there a is a religious there's a religious exemption in there, but it does not. It does not. Um, it does not address the issue of um, of a person who is a Christian and a, is a licensed therapist. They would be forced to That's go right. against that their the conscience, made, right? right. Yes. And so, so, but that'll be the next bill, yeah. next right. session to go after the churches. You know, and so I am so too. disgusted mm -hmm. at the governor, I, I, and I'm not as scared to say it. And I've told him to his face, Governor, you're making a big mistake by uh, signing these two bills. Yeah, you know, it's been very disappointing. Well, you remember when we had Scott Brown on the show, and we we told him, you know, we, we can't support you in the, in the right. primary yep. because you're not you're not pro-life and more social conservatives. And we and told him straight up, you know, what I mean, and I, he couldn't win yeah. w without the social conservatives. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, and Kelly Ayotte lost too, so there's some track record right. there. I can't predict what's going to happen in November. I don't know what the memory of the voters is going to be come that time. Right. Um, the governor is not being primaried um, this time around. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, I have a real fear that a number of voters are going to just not be motivated to come out to vote and that it's going that to affect all us. of the conservatives yeah. well, down the ticket. Well, it's not that they're not going to be motivated. I think it's that they, many of them are telling me they're going to leave his name blank. Well, that was what I was going to say. But then, right. Or if they do go. Yeah. Because I blank. mean, he yeah, he's horrible on mm -hmm. that. But then there right. are other things that that he did a good job on, right. and, and none of that's going to matter. Right, and I mean, it's all going to be reversed. True. And I mean, I'm, he's he's vetoing that Family Medical Leave Act, which would have cost us fifty million dollars, you know, just to get it up and running, and it would have been a burden on the taxpayers. It was a mandate that would have been forcing people on there. Right, and then once you're on there, you're stuck. You have to, you know, it's it's crazy. Yeah. You know, we yeah. fought this stuff here and, and under a Republican House, I don't understand. I know. It. Well, did you know, too, that we are actually paying for gender reassignment surgery yes. and right. cross sex hormones that. through Medicaid yeah. funding? Mm -hmm. and for children. For ch and in, yes, I was getting ready to say. And so not only for adults, but also for children. So our tax dollars are paying to cut off the healthy body parts of children. Right. Yep. These children the are going to, there is the potential that they are going to deeply regret these decisions because it is rendering them infertile and they are, you know, I, the, and they're the, little it's kids. crazy when you think about, you know, there's a Whole Foods in Bedford and it's booming. I mean, everybody loves yeah. going to Whole Foods and, uh, you know, we're all marching over there to get our hormone free chicken and yeah. drink from our PBA free water bottles. Right. And yet we're pumping our bodies with cross sex hormones at such a high level that they're, it's forcing a biological male to grow breasts, mm -hmm. and yet we think that there's not going to be any health implications oh, there for this. Is. It breaks my heart to mm -hmm. think that we're creating this entire population of individuals who are going to be suffering from cancer yeah. because of what the medical community and the politicians are promoting for these young people. Mm -hmm. It really, mm -hmm. it really scares me. So when I spoke on the House floor against the, the transgender bill, I uh, brought up Renee Jacks, who Cornerstone brought out, who's transgender woman who she's been right. living as a woman for 30 years <coughs> um, but still has to shave every morning yeah. and all and after all those years of taking all those hormones her body is falling apart it's true because the, the body wasn't meant to have all these artificial hormones no her liver's she's had, destroyed renee has had retinas. so many different tumors and so many different things that and detached retinas right. i mean he's almost completely blind now because wow. of all the health implications and think about all of the women that are around my age that were going on hormone replacement therapy, you know, for menopause, and then they realized that it was causing all this reproductive cancer in them, and so they pulled back, and the medical community pulled mm -hmm. back because it was, they realized that it was causing these side effects. And wait for, for <laughs> But they, they were having detached suicide. retinas, and Renee oh. has had detached mm -hmm. retinas because wow. of the accelerated um, mm -hmm. um, 
impact. It makes you older, you know, and the, so right. it's like you're like an 85 year old woman, wow. you know, when you're really just 60. And so, mm. you know, we've stopped with the hormone replacement therapy for menopause, and yet we're going to be cranking up the That's hormones. Right. Like it, there's at just the it's a little kids expense. at the taxpayer's mm -hmm. expense. Right. And so then are the taxpayers going to have to pay for the reversal of that when they change their mind yes. or for all of the side effects that inevitably come from that? You too. know, this is why I want Medicaid expansion <sighs> gone. Because that money there, they put in there, the way they interpret it, and you and I were at the meeting, at that hearing there, you know, uh, when, when John, uh, whatever his name, uh, son of Reagan, Reagan yeah. was a deciding vote on that. But anyways, um, they, in there it says discrimination. And don't say, you know, that you should pay for it. Just talks about don't discriminate. Right. That was an interpretation right. by the Obama yes. administration, and with, and the state did not was not required to do that. That they chose yep. to pay for that. That's right. And it wasn't even through the legislative process. The people, the voters, mm -hmm. had no voice in that. That was pushed through through the the administrative rules. Um, you know, within Health and mm -hmm. Human Services, that was a real eye opener for oh. me in terms of how much policy mm -hmm. is done behind closed doors right. through just the rules process. Yep. Um, and I think that we all need to, conservatives need to be paying more attention no about what goes on with the rules. And the sad mm -hmm. thing about it, there was only a few of us there. Yeah. You know, uh, against the, uh, you know, what was going on there. And, and we need more and more to get involved. Yeah. But we need more, like you get a lot of people, you, you bring a lot of people to show up, which is great to speak. But they had their minds made up. Yeah. And they're don't all confuse ready. me with the facts. I've already yeah. made up my mind. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they, you know, we're already all said, don't worry, the taxpayers got a lot of money. They can afford this stuff. That's mm -hmm. crazy. Right. Well, yeah. what can we do for next year? Are you going to be involved in the primaries and... Um yeah, so we Put just finished the, the filing period for running for public office in New Hampshire closed last Friday. Um, today is when well, Tuesday. I don't know when this is going to air, but uh, probably next week. Next yeah. week. So the filing period um, closed in the middle of June, and um, and so you know we were working to try to find candidates that are of like mind to run, and we have a real shortage of people who are willing to step up to the plate to run. You know, we're a citizens' legislature in New right. Hampshire, as you well know. You get paid a hundred a year before taxes. <laughs> before taxes you know and so it really is a volunteer position mm -hmm. and you know I think oftentimes we as the faithful we kind of look at it as somebody else's problem to serve mm -hmm. and we get mad right. that you know what are those guys doing up in Concord mm -hmm. and why aren't they showing up and, and, and to vote and why are they voting the wrong way and the fact of the matter is it's really on all of us within the faith community to look in the mirror and ask ourselves should I be running mm -hmm. for office right. am I at the season in my life where I can do this and and because when you have 424 legislators in a state of only a million people <laughs> we all have to really consider right. running, oh, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and so we may be just losing the fight simply because our people aren't stepping up to the plate to run. It's not because the bad guys have all the power and we can't take it back. Mm -hmm. That is simply not true. No. We absolutely have access to taking it back. It's just that we need to engage the faithful. And so Cornerstone is really committed to engaging the people in the pews and pulling them out to be involved, not only in elections, but also during the legislative session, and not only in elections to just vote for the right person, mm -hmm. but also to actually consider running themselves or recruit others to run or help others mm -hmm. to get elected. You know, when I was talking to a person up in, um, in Claremont, or was it Claremont? I can't remember now exactly which town that it was, way up north. It was one of the towns way up north. And I was trying to get this person to run and they were saying, you know, it's a four hour drive to come down right. to Concord. Yeah. And when the weather's bad, it can mm -hmm. be a five and a half hour yep. drive. They're getting up at like three o'clock in the morning to clear off their sure. driveway. And so it dawned on me, like we need to have like almost a support network around those individuals who would run to go clean off of their driveway, to like mm -hmm. help them with food when they, you know, with their family, when they're away from them, you know, because they're down there. Find families that they can spend the night with in the Concord area, right. you know, so that they're not driving in the wee hours, you know, um, during a bad snowstorm yeah, or whatnot. Yeah, we had a rep go off the road, uh, one of them up north, I can't remember his name, a few years ago. 
Wow. You know, yeah, driving I mean, that's, home, yeah. That's unsettling, mm -hmm. you know, for yeah. people to think about. But, you know, if we can pull around them as a community to help to support them mm -hmm. so that, you know, that they would be willing to right. run. I mean, okay, if the person just goes and if a neighbor cleans off their driveway for them, that's a huge that's help. Big time. That's big time yeah. at three o'clock in the morning because right. it's going to take them five hours to it get takes there. It an hour wow. just to do my driveway to get out so yeah. my wife can get out in the exactly. morning to work. Exactly. But mm -hmm. then, you know, so we, we will be producing our voter scorecard here shortly, which um, measures how all the reps um, and would, the senators so voted. So we both have an A. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I, I actually, co you, well, you probably too, but I co-sponsored most of the uh, life. Life bills. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's uh -huh. right. I think I that's was right. on all of them. Yeah. 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 So we'll have a scorecard so that we have some objective measurement, you know, mm -hmm. of all the bills that Cornerstone follows. And then, um, and we'll be producing that and that will help us to know where to put the focus in the primary to help to educate the voters of any given community about the real stars that are running, that are with us, the heroes, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, of which both of you are. Um, and then, um, and then in the general election, as in years past, we will have a voter guide that we will produce um, that, you know, gives folks information about the positions mm -hmm. of the different candidates. It's difficult for us to have a voter guide in the primary because, you know, we've got <laughs> what 1200 right, candidates yeah. i mean it would just be mm -hmm. mind-boggling to have well, a see, spreadsheet with that but kind see of the, the thing we have is when you do it in the general then what happens is you could knock out certain republicans because they may be what is 80 percent of the time mm -hmm. but just on them 20 percent of life issues not yeah and we knock them out before you know it you got somebody that's what is zero percent of the right time. well but usually in the in voter the general, guide it would indicate you know, you know the, so, the position yeah. you know i mean we are a nonpartisan organization at cornerstone mm -hmm. when a republican is going off the path we will call them out on right. it mm -hmm. but unfortunately the culture in new hampshire is such that we don't even have a seat at the table with the democrats on a lot of the issues right. that we care mm -hmm. about now if we lived in other states maybe like in the south for example it would look very mm -hmm. different right but in New Hampshire, it's very difficult. I think we only had one or two Democrats. You got somebody that like we Roger yeah. Berube. Yeah. Roger Berube. Roger, great guy there, always fighting for life. Oh, and well, you know what? Right. He, you yeah. know, his cousin is, is Father Roger Boucher, who was our chaplain um, my freshman term, the 162nd yeah. state Oh, legislation. wow. Oh, I didn't know so that I didn't know that either. I just oh, okay. found out about that. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we'll, we will be engaging. So Cornerstone will be a resource for the voters to go to. And I think that it's helpful even for some of the candidates to know the positions of the people who they're they're running right. against as well so that you know it, it's a resource because again you guys don't have any staff you don't have somebody that's doing mm -hmm. all the research to figure this stuff out so if we can I be can't keep up with the emails oh, it's oh I can't and either I know and I for some reason no. my email the way it's set up there's no um, trash box it's like if I hit delete it's gone it's gone and I cannot retrieve oh, there's it. no archive and so mm -hmm. I'm trying no and, and so I try to delete you know the garbage that comes in and you know and I look for specifically look for ones from Merrimack and every once in a while I'll hit it too fast and I, I lose mm -hmm. one from my town and, you know, I, go, you know, and today, I feel bad. I took three phone calls. One was about, uh, two of them were veterans issues. One was about on my street, somebody didn't cut their grass. Like, uh, you know, I'm oh, supposed to, yeah, I know. We, you the know calls what I mean? We I'm supposed to, like uh, you know, get involved there, you know, <laughs> right. and tell them, hey, you need to cut. And the guy's 75 years old, you know what I mean? And, Great guy, you know, is a neighbor. So I'm going to go over, just, you know, just to go see. Maybe there's something wrong. Yeah, or sure. Why his son smart. hasn't come over? So I'm going to stop by his house. Yeah, yeah. You know? Oh yeah. But what time are the fireworks? Yeah, so but I'm saying know, the, like, the yeah. stuff we get. Anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had yeah. To, somebody called me mm -hmm. to help them with their mail. They had the mail pick up. There right. was a situation, and I'm like, is mm -hmm. that part of our job description? It is a lot of yeah. work, but you know, it's it really is a public service, and I just can't thank you guys enough for your willingness to serve. Mm -hmm. I know that it is time consuming, and that's why it is so important that you know you have your time, and then be, and then there's kind of like a bench in place that mm -hmm. you know when you need a timeout, then somebody right. else can step in and and do it. And so I would just really encourage mm -hmm. the viewers to really consider for themselves whether they would be willing to mm -hmm. run for office in New Hampshire. It's so easy to get involved and Joy. to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, like here, um, you know, I get so many compliments from you know the Christians in the town on the social issues mm -hmm. because I made it clear I am not changing my values because oh, I'm a yeah. state representative. And on some of the Democrats, oh, you're supposed to be voting for us. No, you, you don't even vote for me, anyways. You know what I mean? So right. you're saying I'm supposed yeah, to vote? No, I'm too. not changing my ways. You know, I'm a Catholic and I'm a proud Catholic. I may not go to church every Sunday, 
but I was brought up that way, and I'm not changing my views for nobody. Right. You know what I mean? So, and I tell them, vote me out then if you don't like it. Right. But it's just the Democrats are the ones, most of them, because we do have, there are some Democrats sure. in town here that are very, yeah. you know, pro-life. I, and, I, I um, get the same, you know, and, you know I, I'll get emails like, you're supposed mm -hmm. to represent me, and I'm like, right. well, I have to vote yes or no on every single bill, and you say yes, you say no. I there's no way That's for me right. to That's serve right. both of you, so That's I have right. to look at how did I promise I would vote? I said I would always I would be a conservative. I would vote no to all tax right. increases and growing the government, right. and I and I've kept my promise in, right. in the eight years I've well, been. You know, up. even yeah. when some people might disagree with you, the fact that they know your positions and that you're consistent and that there's some level of predictability mm. of how you would vote because they know your moral compass. Right. I think goes a long way, it even does. if they disagree with yeah. you. And right. I could see where, you know, I've had people in my own in my own district that, okay, they're a straight shooter, I know how they're going to vote, but it's better than dealing with the person that you just, they have no moral compass, right. and it's whatever way yeah. that the wind is blowing. Yeah. And, and they follow the leader, they're like yeah. little puppets. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. and I exactly. Now, I have a, a friend who's pro-abortion, and she knows I'm pro-life, but she says, but I, I trust you because you you don't try to hide it. Right. You know, so she'll mm -hmm. vote for me. You're not going to tell somebody right. something different. Right. And it makes a difference when you look somebody right in the eye and tell them the truth. Because, I mean, I've, I've been saying for years, if you don't want the truth, that I'm the wrong person. Right. If, you know what I mean? Because I'm not a politician. I'm an elected official. And yeah. I believe a politician, you've got to tell people what they want to hear to, you know, get a vote out of them. Right. Vote me out of office if you don't like it. Right. Life goes on. Yeah. You know? It's not like you don't have yeah. other things you'd rather that's right, be doing. Yeah. I can be in Florida <laughs> that, six I mean, that's like one of the you. things, you know, when people get frustrated mm -hmm. about the way that some of the folks vote, and, you know, you have to step back and realize, too, that for a lot of these folks, they're serving out of the goodness of their heart right. in many ways, mm -hmm. and that they're doing the best that they can. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they're absent or whatever because they have an elderly parent that they're taking mm -hmm. care well, of we and so forth. We have a lot of working, but... Um, yeah, parents that, yeah. that and then they can't be there yeah. getting sent away on business and I know That's they right. get in trouble you know right they exactly. Heat for it, but we, exactly we had a great they guy here in Londonderry Rob Rimmel big time on the um, the trails everything but he realized he ran for state rep but he realized he owns a business he just couldn't be there yeah. He didn't realize it was as much time as it is. Yeah, yeah. You know? No, it's true. It becomes o it's overwhelming. Present. And, you know, and for a lot of those folks, you know, people say, aren't they afraid they're not going to get elected if they vote the wrong way? But a lot of them are like, please vote me out. Yeah. Please. I, right. I, yeah. I want to spend time with my kids. Right. Yeah. I want to, you know, if uh, you, you know, can find can, somebody to run I can to think of a hundred projects awesome. I could be yeah. doing. Right. I, yeah. can, I can write a book. I have enough information mm. to write a book. And <laughs> yeah. I just... Yeah, can you tell us some of the good things now? Yeah, well, some yes. of the good things. So we did yeah. have a lot of good good wins. So there was a bill that sought to um, legalize prostitution. It was a pathway to legalize prostitution, and we stopped that yeah. bill. Um, Physician-assisted suicide, um, there was a push for that, as there is pretty much mm -hmm. every, every session. Year, yeah. Of course, and you know so, who was the speech there on the floor to, to change that. Yeah. Yeah. So, was, that, that, was that was me. Yeah. Yes. I turned it into a veterans issue. You know, because it was, uh, you know, we spent millions of dollars on suicide to prevent for veterans killing mm. each other or killing and themselves. Just turn around and, yeah. So I turned it around, you know, and yeah. a lot of people said to me after they changed their vote. That's great. That's mm -hmm. awesome. That's, I mean, that's such winsomeness to understand right. and how mm -hmm. to tie it in and, yeah. you know, make the argument for it. But I'm sure that it'll be back again oh, next no year. Oh, there's no doubt. But, you know, the fact that we kind yeah. of, you know, mm -hmm. held back the, the Hoover Dam mm -hmm. yet again on I that one I went to Massachusetts important. and testified at their house there against oh, that was theirs. a big deal down yeah. there. I don't think they passed. I think they, uh, I don't think they did. No, they yeah, did. They yeah. stopped it. They stopped but I went it. to the house and testified. I was brought up by. That's a, been a big come. fight down there yeah. in the diocese, the archdiocese. of right. um, Boston mm -hmm. has been very, very involved in that. And then there was another bill that um, that we won on that sought to allow minors to consent to their own medical care, and we were able to stop that right. yeah. um, as well. I mean, it oh, got crushed yes. in the committee. Mm -hmm. Actually, oh, I went to that hearing. I sat with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know that was that was a big deal to mm -hmm. be able to stop that. I mean, think about you know a. a 16 year old being able to consent to their own abortion or right. to right. having <laughs> to gender reassignment surgery right. or or even you know just any other kind of mm -hmm. medical care that maybe they don't know the history of their you know their health like they like the parent would and so um so that was a, a victory to be able mm -hmm. to stop that right. and to be able to celebrate parent, parents mm -hmm. rights you know mm -hmm. to be there was one bill there which i was really uptight about was on the marriage bill because i felt being a first out in the Marine Corps, I dealt with many 17-year-olds that show up to the base 
with their 16-year-old pregnant girlfriend in the barracks, I mean, in the hotel out in town. So I felt that as a first son, that did you got to do the right thing and marry that girl, you know, to get her benefits, to get her medical so she could be seen by the doctor and get insurance mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. When I tried to bring that up, they laughed, the Democrats on that, I understand. I said, I dealt with many of these cases. In the Marine Corps, it's a young man, woman's game. You know, and yeah. these guys that come in 17 years old, got 15, 16 year old girlfriends, and they're pregnant. If the system was not broken, the judge, you gotta go in front of a judge. If a mom, as a father, I would want my daughter, that baby, to have an opportunity in life mm -hmm. and have a father involved. Whether it be they would love each other, or whether, you know, yeah, they're let passing them, out condoms, yeah. though, but if you get pregnant, right. you can't get married. So you know what I'm saying? Law. So yeah. I would say I would want them to get married and I would support them so they get educated and work with them. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's why I was against that because I dealt with many cases. Yeah. Now, what we did was we forced them now, they're going to leave the state. Mm, you know, yeah. instead of going to a judge, they just go to another state and get yeah. married. Yeah. So that little young little girl will have, you know, better insurance benefits mm -hmm. from that young military guy that got her pregnant. Uh, so yeah, it really hit point. me yeah. on that because I sure. dealt with many cases. Sure. I take money out of my pocket, go get get, get some food. Right. You know, what I mean, uh, and it was I was really disgusted over that. Sure, mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense. We stepped into something that wasn't broken. Yeah. You know, but yeah. life goes on. So what else? What other questions? Because we got about two and a half minutes. Oh, oh well, I was going to ask you what you were going to work on in the summer, but it's been two well, minutes. Well, yeah, I can just touch on it a little bit. So we've been having some regional pastors meetings, um, breakfasts around the state to engage the faith community um, over the long haul, you know, not just because it's an election year, but as we talked about before, you know, mm -hmm. really getting people in the pews involved in, um, as many would call it, the government mountain, you know, and so, so we'll be working on that. We also have five college interns that have come oh, on yes, board I with us them. this summer uh, yes. too mm -hmm. and um, and so we're doing some projects with them we're, we're going to be working with them on some videos related to um, sex trafficking human trafficking yeah I've uh, been involved in that myself yeah. yes and yeah. so um, trying to educate others about that and that of course would tie into this push that we see um, among some of the libertarians to legalize prostitution uh, because we believe that legalizing prostitution will actually lead to more human trafficking right. mm -hmm. and time. so yeah. we want to that's right and so mm -hmm. we want to help to educate them and so our interns are helping us out with um, some of those efforts over the summer mm -hmm. while they're here too so you know we feel strongly that um, the other side has done a very good job at um, targeting the youth young adults and children and so we think that it's really important that we also reach out and to cultivate them to into understanding what the ramifications are for taking some of those liberal viewpoints and having government be the answer mm -hmm. taking away parental rights etc we should do a show on human trafficking oh, my women's club know. is having a panel yeah, discussion let about me it. ask you how do how do people get in touch with your group if they want to get involved we have about 40 seconds here they can go to our website which is nhcornerstone.org okay. nhcornerstone.org we'll put New that Hampshire up on the screen now Org. And then also um, they can uh, reach out to our email, cornerstone at nhcornerstone.org. But, you know, they can just go to the website and check us out mm -hmm. there. So. Well, that's awesome. Well, it's definitely a pleasure. Yeah. You know, I'm glad you came Thank on you, board Shannon. here. I'm so glad. And, Thanks uh, for having me. You seen the me on TV yesterday where I took them on up at the State House about the flag? Uh, yes, I did. Show. I did yeah, see a picture of you. Show. Good job. Yeah, so ah. I, I stopped them from uh, along with the police anyways. And I saw the uh, the chief of security there. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I did all the talking there because they couldn't get involved. Once again, who's looking out for you? We'll be back with another show.